Hello and welcome. Today I've got a slightly different repair video. I'm going to show you five essential tools that you need to repair a DeWalt battery with this particular issue. Here in front of me I have two batteries. I have an 18 volt 4 ampere battery and a, I'm guessing, 4 or 5. I'm not sure if it's a 4 or 5 ampere inside for a battery. This is past the point of rescue. The cells are all either missing or completely destroyed. This one's got a different kind of an issue. It's showing two bars. It won't work on a charger and won't power a tool. It's not even registering on the charger at all. Or per nut. Although you could say from looking, this one's worse than this one. Um, they're both as useless as each other at the minute. So to identify the issue, like I've already showed, it's not charging, it's not powering the tool, even those two bars. The first essential tool I use in the repair is a multimeter. Like this. And With that in the positive terminal and that in the negative terminal, plus and minus, you know. And I'm getting 17.9, which is perfectly chargeable voltage normally. But we won't know really fully what's going on until we get inside. But I'm willing to gamble that it is this board that it requires. The second essential tool I need in the repair of this is this is a Sabercut TX10. Also, I have another brand which I would recommend too, and that's Hacking TX10 with the hole up the center. And these with the screws in the bottom of these batteries, you know. And that's what you need to remove them. And now we move on to essential tool number three, which is the cordless screwdriver to drive this. Makes it a heck of a lot easier. We'll have to get the top off and from the top we can measure the output of all these cells to see what the difference is if there's any difference in the, the banks of cells or there's any low cells high cells dead cells Again, you need a multimeter to do this. Um, you can't do this without taking it out of the pack. In some cases, I would recommend taking it out of the pack because you can uh, you can see if there are any broken connections in the side or whatnot. So 3.63. 3.63. 3 3.6, near enough. Near enough the same all the way so far. 3.6 there's not significant imbalance in this 3.64 so if that board was right and doing its job it should be purring the tool maybe might be a little bit low might be the cutoff point of the tool but it certainly should be charging so that's why we're going to remove the board this brings me on to the last two essential tools I'll do these together. This is the Milwaukee soldering iron I use. You need a soldering iron to do this job. Um, I'll just switch it on, let it heat up. Battery could do a wee bit of charge, but it might get away with it. And moving on to item number five, 
a small screwdriver and once this heats up I'll show you how you use both these items to remove this board I'm just going to put a little bit of flux in the connections just to get them off you know I'm going to try and put as much uh, information about these items that I'm using on the uh, in the comment section, pinned in the comment section, and also in the description of the video. When you're doing this, wear safety glasses or safety goggles because things can sparks of this here can come up and go into your eye, and that's hot solder. You don't want that in your eye. That hit me in the face one time, but I was very, very lucky it didn't happen in the eye. Um, you can remove this from the casing to um, to make it easier um, to desolder these, but in the in the context of this video, I'm going to just just do the shortcut. You see how I'm using the screwdriver to pry that up and that left side out. Don't let it down too quick. Let the solder let the solder cool again before you let it down. So pry that up and put a using this technique that I'm doing inside the casing saves you taking the battery out of the casing. There's two reasons why you shouldn't do that, is if you don't take it out of the casing you'll not be able to see if there's any other broken connections anywhere. And also using the soldering air near the edge of the plastic can melt this and cause you problems, you know. Damage the casing, you know. So be very careful not to do that. that cool that's that and last but not least there we are And that means you should be able to now remove the circuit board here completely. Should completely left off. As we um yeah yeah that's another reason for the screw there. You have to pry them out of the things that are holding them there. And if you're reusing one of these boards, be careful because you can break off them wire things, and you have to rejoint them. And it's a bit of a pain, you know, to do that. Let's see what's holding out. There's a bit of adhesion there. That's alright. That's it off. So that's the board off the battery that's going to receive the donor board. We'll do the same on the other one. There's some of the work already done here. So we'll just um, take off these plates. We're not going to have to be very neat. Spark. <laughs> so be very careful with them sparks of solder because it's so you don't want them landing in your eye. Eye protection. Gloves are a must as well. You have to be careful of this and not break anything off it because this is the one we're going to use. So that's this pack, you know, completely beyond use. There's nothing really of purpose on it, it's any good now. 
Um, yeah, let's. He died, so this one could live, hopefully. So now the simple, intricate part we've all been looking forward to getting this all put together again. So we have a good working battery. Everything's there's no real uh, you just one off, one on one off. You know it's it's just modular replacement. It's not everything's in the right place. You know, not many manufacturing to do. Nothing too nothing too fancy. Nothing clever. Starting with the negative terminal here, get it well stuck down here. Let that go before I let it go. I'd be pretty happy with that. And the first terminal here. No need to add maybe additional solder there at all, just to just stick it down. You need to be careful about working with metal parts around these batteries because um, you can cause cross connections and all sorts of nonsense if you're not careful. I know, I've done it. I've done it all. Couple more connections and we're good to go. Knife's good. There we are. A little bit of flux. Maybe in that again. We should have a good battery when we're finished here. So nothing remains to do but to put this together as best we can and try and uh, see if it charges does the things it's supposed to There we are, she's all back together. So we'll try it in the charger now. And it's charging. So we'll have to give that a little time. See if it charges up and then we'll try it on the tool. Well, I'm very, very pleased to say that this has achieved a full charge. The charger stopped charging it. It's shown two bars, but that could be a fault in the, uh, in the battery indicator. The only way to truly know is to check the voltage with the multimeter put these in the right terminals yep 
20 volts so it is fully charged doesn't get much better than that so I'm calling that fixed and if you want to buy some of those tools I've showcased on this video I'll put the link in the description and, and in the comment section 